Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue and I'm bringing you all this video of me talking about a board game. This is going to be in the Cool Blue and Cardboard series and the game today, as you can see on the table, is Marvel Legendary. This is going to be part two of the two-part series, uh, possibly three-part if you want to do a playthrough. Um, I don't know if I want to do a playthrough, but I probably will eventually. Of uh, Marvel Legendary as a system, this is me showing the storage solution that I promised I would show. And as you can see here, we got the game, Marvel Legendary, Legendary Heroes, all the, oh, I don't know what's in there, but stuff's in there. Let's put this inside. And we got the boxes. They're gonna be the center story. So this box contains all of the expansions that I had, as I mentioned before in the previous video, if you have not checked it out, I'll, I'll link it in the top so you can go check it out if you want to. But in the previous video, I talked about the storage solution. So here we have two boxes. Oh, actually, wrong order. Oh no, that's so heavy. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of cardboard. <laughs> so we have, we have two boxes here. Uh, my struggles aside to lift this up one-handed at an awkward angle. Um, and in these boxes, we have a storage of the game. Now, um, I could have stored these in just normal Magic the Gathering boxes uh, or card boxes that we use for cards like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon cards, stuff like that, uh, where you have a bunch of cards in a cardboard box. But I want something a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more um, sustainable. And for these, these are Ammo Crate boxes by uh, MTM, I think. MTM Ammo Crates, I forget the exact model number. I'll put it in the description if you really want to see it. Or actually, better yet, a link to my board, game po my board Game Geek post from 2021, I think, or 2020, to where I actually um, talked about this build and did more commentary on it. So I'll link to that post so you can go check it out there uh, to figure out more details, but I want it sounds a little bit more sturdy. This is also water resistant. I don't think it's fully waterproof, but in the top up here, I don't know if you can see that, uh, I think you can. Uh, it has an O-ring in there, so it has like a nice rubber ring to keep out the elements and everything will stay there nice and protected. Uh, here's a game mat, aftermarket game mat, not an official one. Or maybe it is official one, I don't know. But, oh no, it's probably not, because it's by... Or maybe it's the artist, I don't know. Uh, let me see. Oh, this, this is an official game mat, look at that. Look at that, you got, you got Ultra Pro, Marvel, and Upper Deck in there. So I'm assuming this is a, an official game mat. Um, but I got this game mat because I didn't want to put the board in there. So the game mat was a nice alternative, so I didn't have to uh, keep the, the awkward cardboard in there on, on the top of the box, because it, it fit, but it was also not the best fit. Uh, it, it wasn't really until I had two boxes to where I could have fit the cardboard in here, as far as the actual board that comes with the core box. But at any rate, um, I have a little mat in there and it fits nice in the middle, rolled up. Under that, I have all the cards for the villain groups. There's a ton of villain groups this game gives you. And uh, if I tilt the, well, I'm not gonna tilt it because I don't want to risk pouring the cards out. But each of these, each of these uh, entries in here has the oh, <laughs> nice little Avengers thing that I made a while ago. <laughs> nice. Uh, each of these has the characters cards in here, and then uh, you also have a little card. I have a I plus C, so I think this is Into the Cosmos. Um, ITC, I think. Uh, and I handmade all these. Uh, this is before I had a printer. If you know, if I were to go back and do it again, I would print it all out. But I had to go get more printed cartridges before that. So I was continue doing the handwriting because it's kind of like a tradition at this point. Um, but you have the cards. This is a representation of the cards. So Adam Warlock has one, two, three, four, five red commons. So it's red there. One, two, three, four, five green commons. So it's there. And then one, two, three red commons. That's determined by the bottom, the edge of there, and then the symbol there. Uh, so there's one right there. And then it has one blue, which is a range attack, one blue ultimate, so it's right there. So those are, those are the cards that we have for the character, and every character has their own individual little thing with their colors at the top, and it has uh, the expansion at the bottom, just in case I wanted to go find out what expansion they came from. Uh, that, was, that was a little touch I added at the end, because I was like, oh, you know what, what if I want to know what expansion they came from? So we got another one, we got, um, we got here, Darkhawk. Uh, this is Darkhawk's card. This is um, black, red, black, black. So one, two, three, four, five, black. One, two, three, four, five, red. One, two, three, um, black, and then the final one, black. So Darkhawk has a bunch of technology cards in there. And let me put them back where they were. Uh, oof. They were Daredevil. And who is this? So some of these are not labeled because they're ones I got after. This is Doctor Strange. So Darkhawk goes before Doctor Strange. Actually goes before... Uh, it goes after Daredevil before Doctor Strange. Okay, cool. <laughs> Keeping it alphabetized is very important because that makes it easier to follow. Also, these are arranged by teams. So you can see these are the Avengers. So if I bring out Adam Warlock again, you see that Adam Warlock's team affiliation is the Avengers. So Adam Warlock is in this Avengers section. Though Adam Warlock came from a different set, 
um, I do try to keep it sorted that way. So that way when I do want to go try to do like a random fight and I find a villain that's specific to Avengers, I can just go look at this smorgasbord of Avengers. Nope, there's a ton of Avengers. And there's also a ton of X-Men, but there's more Avengers than X-Men, which makes sense because I guess that's Marvel's big thing. Um, and also some of these some of these Avengers are actually copies of others. So I think I have multiple Black Widows. Uh, no, I, I, okay, I know I have multiple Captain Americas because Captain America had his own set. So I got Captain America, I got Falcon as Captain America, I got Captain America Secret Avenger, I got Captain America 1941, and the Captain and the Devil, which is Captain America riding a dinosaur. Pretty fun stuff. Uh, and then I got Captain, oh, it's Captain Marvel, uh, and it's Captain Marvel, and more stuff. So there, there's some duplicates of some heroes, and like, that's cool and all. I guess theme, you know, get a whole team of captains and go fight some, go fight Baron Zemo or something. Um, but all these are divided by, uh, with the big dividers here that I just cut out a poster board. Uh, this is made out of poster board, it's divider here. And uh, one of the things is like, I had these originally glued to the board, uh, to the box, but the box is plastic and the glue was hot glue. So this was not a long lasting solution. So it can slip out if you really tried hard enough. But honestly, if this is about to slip, at risk of slipping out, everything's at risk of falling out anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, and also these fit just barely in the arrangement they did. What I mean by that is they fit like so, to where these are, there's four rows of standing upright and there's one row of laying down. I could have arranged this in however way I wanted to, but I wanted to do this kind of center, center style and I kind of have these standing up. So that way it kind of feels like you're at a comic book store, you know, looking for your favorite comic. It's like, oh yeah, just kind of looking for Black Swan. Uh, we got Maximus here. Let me see, oh, Beast. Oh, we'll look at the Beast comic. I can pull out that one and look it out like a comic. You know, it kind of felt like a nice nostalgic touch, uh, which is the same exact thing you can get from one of those cardboard boxes that holds Magic the Gathering cards, by the way. So I, I do want to emphasize that this is, this is, um, I wouldn't necessarily say overkill, but this is definitely the sign of somebody who spent about $1,000 on Marvel Legendary and wants to protect their investment of Legendary. Um, so yeah, so you can kind of go through and like you're in a comic book store and kind of have that little nostalgia. And I, I thought it was a cool touch. It was unintentional, but it was fun. And uh, oh, these cubes, I love those cubes so much. They come from all the games that I have, all the big box expansions and all the core game of Marvel Legendary. I did not buy any extra. I do still have a ton of extra over here in the core box. If I open up the core box, I don't know what's in here. So forgive me if there's weird things in here. Okay, everything's fine. Oh, oh man, it's a nightmare in here. So these are the dividers that the game comes with, which these dividers could work, uh, but they're a little bit too wide for what I need it. So I just custom cut some, some of my own. And then there's the double-sided cards, the infamous double-sided cards that they give us. They, I have a bunch of those. And these are some of the foam dividers. Um, some of the other big box expansions I have the foam dividers in too. And those are too far away for me to grab right now, so I'll just put this aside and put that in mind. Uh, my cards are sleeved. I do want to mention that. So nearly all of them are sleeved. I say nearly all. Like if I had to give a percentage, I say about 85 to 87% are sleeved. Um, I recently discovered that some of the later expansions I got, I did not sleeve all the cards before I put them in here because I, I guess I didn't want to do it. So some of these that are not marked uh, might have cards that are not sleeved. And that's a little frustrating because I ran out of sleeves uh, at the perfect time. Like, oh, I ran out, I have exactly enough sleeves to sleeve everything. But unfortunately, it turns out I didn't put everything there. I didn't sleeve everything, so I got to go sleeve some stuff. So these are using sleeves. The If you want those sleeves, they're using the KCM Perfect Fit sleeves. Uh, and this is a bunch of sleeves. There's over a thousand cards. There's well over a thousand cards. I can say that for sure, um, but I don't know how many actual cards are in here between these two boxes. And uh, they're all sleeved, or they, they will be all sleeved eventually. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a problem in the middle here. I'm going to figure out an alternative solution because these are also villain groups. They don't have their dividers made yet. These are from some of the new expansions. These are all sleeved already. Some of these villain groups in the middle here are not sleeved yet, and it's already a tight fit like this. Oh. And I want to be able to have a little space to be able to go in and pick them out without getting too cramped. So I might have to uh, put some of the villain group over here, which there's space over there. But then, you know, Marvel's coming out with another expansion, by the way, another uh, small box expansion. I was like, ah, stop it. <laughs> Just let this let the pain end already. Uh, but also part of me is like, oh, I kind of want to see what heroes it come out with. Because as I mentioned before in the uh, the review or commentary video, I was talking about how playing this game or buy, at least buying the game uh, in the few times that I played it over the years, over the 10 years that I've had it. Uh, in playing the game, I've I've learned about a lot of heroes. Like Jocasta is one of the ones that I just kind of sticks in my mind. I didn't know who the heck Jocasta was or what a Jocasta was. But then when I got the Ant-Man expansion, which is what Jocasta came in, 
I kind of, I kind of say, you know, let me do some research. I started doing some research, looking up my favorite YouTubers, uh, comic books explained, shout out to them. Also shout out to uh, comic book historian and try, trying to catch up on the videos of like, you know, who is Jocasta? What is Jocasta relevant to? Finding different stories and different video suggestions for all the people who do in the heavy lifting of helping me make it through comic books because reading comic books directly, I, d I don't really have the patience to do so, but listening to the cool stories and hearing somebody narrate and tell me what's cool about it and what the cool, what the neat little facts are and the plot twist, like, I love that. That's great. So please give me more media like that. Um, but learning about Jocasta was really fun because I got to find more about the Ant-Man universe. I got to find more, find out more about, uh, in general, Jocasta's origins and uh, the relationship to, I think, Jocasta is related to Ultron to some degree. I don't, don't, don't call me on that. I might be misremembering mis uh, mis some of the stuff. Um, so I, I, got to, I got to learn a lot. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun just learning about the different heroes and learning about the different things and seeing their cards and kind of figuring out how that card feels like people. Like, uh, the, for instance, Spider-Man feels like Spider-Man. When I play Spider-Man, I feel like I'm playing Spider-Man. You know, I'm able to like be agile and jump across cards and you know, I, I can like draw a card and play a card lets me draw a card and then draw a card lets me play a card and then play a card lets me draw a card and then then draw two more cards and then let me play more cards. Like I kind of feel like, ah, ah, look, I'm like bouncing around. And then at the end, after I played my, my 60 cards as Spider-Man, I've done six damage. And it's like, yep. Yeah, Sounds about right. Meanwhile, when you play Hulk, uh, the original Hulk sucks. But if you, when you play some of the later Hulks, uh, like in the from the World War Hulk series, from from the uh, Warbounds, uh, they feel fun because they feel like they feel very powerful. You know, they're slow and they're brooding, but they're powerful. And when you do like you know you play like three cards, you've done like seventeen damage. It's like yeah, I'm Hulk. <laughs> like it's, it feels cool. Like it, it gives you that feeling. So the game does do a good job of kind of keeping you up with that. Uh, but this is about this this is about Sword Solution, not the game. So let me let me go back to Sword Solution. <laughs> Got a little excited about the game. Uh, but yeah, this is where the henchmen are, the schemes, and this is box one. I don't know, have I shown box two yet? I have not shown box two. Let me go to box two. I spent a lot of time on box one. Box two is more of the same. It has all the X-Men in it because the X-Men and the Avengers take up a whole row. So I wanted to kind of space it out a little bit. I wanted to kind of space it out a little bit so we can uh, have a little bit of breathing room for stuff. That's where I keep the rules as well and some of the some of the hint sheets or the cheat sheets that I can give to players. I usually play this game solo anyway. Um, I think I might play it three player max. Uh, five player sounds like a nightmare. But yeah, so this is like a cheat sheet that has everything going up to the Heroes of Asgard, which for context, that includes all the expansions of Marvel Heroes with the exception of, or sorry, except for the new Black Panther one that just came out, the new Black Widow one uh, that came out recently. Uh, the Doctor Strange Shadows of Shadows of Nightmare, the Messiah Complex, and Annihilation Complex, or an, an Annihilation Saga. So it includes all but five, which is you know, pretty good when you have 28 expansions uh, like this game has. And I'm only missing five from this cheat sheet. That's pretty nice. But I'm assuming this been, these cheat sheets have been updated. Uh, so I'll go get the updated version eventually. Also, just, just echoing a, again, a major complaint I have from the previous game is like, why are there so many key words? Like, yes, the keywords are not like super opaque and super crazy to like, kind of go learn. But if you're trying to mix it all together, then you got to learn, okay, what does this keyword mean? What does that keyword mean? What does this, what does this word mean? What does that word mean? I mean, like some of these words are kind of, now, I can't even say that, like, like, like dark memories. Like what, what the heck is the dark memories? What's the dark memories mean? Hyperspeed, what does that mean? What, what's, what's the human shields? I guess it does something with human shields. And it's in, in like, at least these terms are kind of straightforward to where you can maybe figure it out just by reading. Bribe is, you know, pay money instead of using attack. Um, artifacts are the little artifacts you have. Ambush is when a card first shows up and you do a thing. So those those words make sense. Meanwhile, just uh, taking a nice jab at Renegade again, as I like to do here, for, apparently. Uh, Renegade comes up with keywords like install, update, uh, upload, and you know server partition. And it's like what 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 do what does this mean? What does this mean? Anyway, All right. This this is not the bash bash Renegade show because um I do, I do enjoy playing the game every once in a while, but this is here to talk about storage solution and that's a tour of the storage solution. Uh, if you want to see from the front, I will risk dumping out the entire game just to give you a nice view of the front. Actually, let me give you a view of the other one. I'll see the way the other one looks. Move this box out of the way completely since I'm done with it. It's moderately painful, but we're good. So this is what it looks like when you look at it from the front. Uh, if I pour this game out, at least it's on camera. I did it for the views, y'all. I did it for the views. There we go. Oof. And I'll sort it out later. 
So yeah, so this is what it looks like from the front, which I think is, has a nice uh, presence. You know, once I finish adding the labels for the rest of these, because I did hay make all this, um, I, I like the look. Like it's, it's like a nice aesthetic to it. And it looks pretty cool. And then over here, just to differentiate these villain groups from everything else, you can see that they have a blue tab in the top corner. And then if I pull out one of these, you'll see that they have their name on it. So it has their name. And on the bottom corner, you have um, what, what expansion they came from. Over here uh, on the far side, these are the henchmen groups. So this is like the, I can't see, what does it say? Hold on, hold on. Uh, that one's the corpse, the core. I think it's the, uh, the Thor core. And over here you have the phalanx. And then back here you have, these are the schemes as sorted by the expansion they came in. So this is the Captain America schemes. And the reason why I did it that way is because, like I said, the schemes are kind of specific to the heroes and to the, to the packs. And I could try to do it alphabetical, but I didn't want the nightmare trying to find out what's where. So I just kept all the schemes based on the expansion that came in. So there's about 28 different uh, dividers over here, or allegedly there will be, once it's all done. It's getting a little heavy. And yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what the box looks like at the end of the day. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the storage solution. I think it works out. If you have a bunch of Marvel Legendary, I'd recommend it. Uh, if you have just a little bit of Marvel Legendary, just, just use the box as it comes in, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you have an excessive amount of Marvel Legendary, especially the Heroes version and like, you know, nearly all of it, I think it's fair. I think it's fair to have an alternative storage solution so you can actually maybe play the game. Like this game is significantly more likely to hit the table because I have a storage solution. If I did not have a storage solution, I would always have the FOMO of bringing the game with me to go play at a friend's house and then say, ooh, but I want to play as the X-Men. It's like, oh, but I bought the Avengers box. And it's like, no. So now I can, now I can like carry both crates and you know, they're not, they're not that small. They're not that light. Uh, especially with all the stuff in there. It's like maybe, uh, I guess like maybe four, maybe 30 pounds. I don't know. That might be an underestimate. I might be maybe 30 pounds of stuff between the two boxes. Maybe 40 pounds if we're counting both. But yeah, I can carry it all with me. And I can actually take it to a game night and actually play and enjoy it. And also not feel bad if somebody has sweaty hands or dirty hands because all the cards are sleeved. So there you go. That's my investment. That's my um, wild wacky tour of my Marvel Legendary stuff. Definitely let me know what you all think in the comments below, Definitely, if, especially if you have certain feels about how the game has all those terms. Like that's like one of my biggest pet peeves. Like why do we have so many new terms? Just just reuse some of the old stuff. You have 10 years worth of content and you're making new terms. It's like, why are we making new terms? Uh, just use the stuff from like six years ago. You have such a, such a library of things to do. I don't know, I'll never understand. I mean, I, I will one day, but I'll continue to complain about it in the forums. But definitely let me know what you feel about the game in general, what you like about the storage solution. Um, as I said before, in the description, I'll put a link to my Board Game Geek post that talked a little bit more, or talked a lot more about the storage solution when I was building it, and uh, how I was using it, and what materials I use, and what exact, uh, what the exact model numbers of this box, and all the other fun stuff. Um, but yeah, that's it. So hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, I, I at least got to show off my Marvel Legendary stuff that I'm still collecting because <laughs> like I said new expansion uh, looking forward to that uh, hope you all enjoyed it and as always I will see you all whenever